it's Mary. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Let me put some light on the subject. Well, that might make it fall. Oh, it's always just complicated to get the lighting right. Hey, when you pop on, introduce yourself. Um, tell me where you are right now. Are you home for the holiday? Meaning like home, like with your parents, um, with your family, or are you home home? Like where you live and that's where you plan to spend your holiday. Um, but come on and introduce yourself. I hope I can see the comments. I don't know why, for some reason, I'm not seeing any comments right now um, or any information below, but that, that doesn't always mean anything. So, um, but I am so excited. I want to jump right in because we all have so much to do tonight, right? Hey, Carol, hey, Amy, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, grab pen and paper because what I'm gonna do with you tonight is not a motion, motivational rah-rah. I mean, I know if you know me, if you know anything about me, um, I'm all about cheering you on and being your biggest encourager and rah rahing you um, all the time. But I want to make sure I'm giving you tangible, doable, proven tips that are going to help you get through the next two months unscathed. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, hey Tracy, Corey's here, Shannon's here, Robbie. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you for joining me. As I said, um, if you'll comment and introduce yourself and just tell me, where are you spending Thanksgiving? Are you home with your family, meaning you drove somewhere to be with your uh, family, maybe from your hometown, or are you staying home where you live now um, and you're just gonna enjoy Thanksgiving with your family here? Do you have company coming in? I would love to hear uh, what's going on with you. Hey, my girl, Jamisha, nice to see you. Um, I also wanna know from you in the comments, what do you feel like is your biggest obstacle? Uh, thank you for the hearts, thank you for the thumbs up. Feedback is much appreciated because I'm talking into a hole in a phone. It, it's a little bit hard sometimes. Um, but if I can feel your energy because you're commenting and you're giving me hearts and you're giving me thumbs up when you can, can you um, relate to something I'm saying or you like what I'm saying, it really will help me and keep me motivated and encouraged to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Oh, before we start, let's share this because here's the deal. We all know um, how much God loves us to pay it forward and share things, right? So we don't want to be selfish and take all of Mary's tips and just make sure we keep ourselves on the wagon um, and, and, you know, survive the holidays. We want to make sure we help everyone around us. We want to wrap our arms around our family and wrap our arms around the people we love and say, you know what? I learned something today and I want to share it with you. So best way to do that is share, hit the share button right here on this live. Share it to your Facebook friends uh, and family and peeps, everybody who's your friend on Facebook, and then they can join me and hear it right from my mouth. How about that? That would be really cool. Jamisa, Jamisha says, um, Misha, I know you like to be called Misha, from Columbus, Georgia. I'm going to my grandma's house. Awesome. I get to see my cousin that I haven't seen in 12 years. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. I love you to death. Um, I love going to granny's house, right? My grannies are, are all um, up with Jesus uh, and they're home. Talk about going home for the holidays. Like they're home for the holidays. So uh, anyway, I really, I still have a turkey to brine and a bunch of side dishes that I really wanted today to, to, uh, get done because I thought, you know what, if I could get a couple of those side dishes um, knocked out, uh, then tomorrow I won't have so much to cook. I am hosting here in my home. Um, my parents have moved down here. They are officially Floridians and they arrived this week end Saturday. Um, and so they're going to be coming for Thanksgiving. My sister-in-law is coming. My son will be here. My husband, of course, and two for babies, Max and Maggie, um, will be here as well. So I am cooking, 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 and I have a lot to do and I'm sure you do as well. And I want to jump right in. Um, I want to share with you some really cray cray stats that you're going to, you're going to go, what? Cause I went, what? And, uh, and it's going to really help keep things in perspective of why it's so important. I really feel like I keep saying this, but First of all, first of all, let me rewind myself. You need to understand something. I am not coming on here today to say, you gotta make sure you get your workouts in and you gotta make sure that um, you don't eat any of that crap. That's not what this is about. This tonight, put your shoulders down and smile really big. This is 
I'm gonna teach you how you can have the cranberry sauce and you can have the piece of pumpkin pie and you can enjoy whatever your favorite thing is that you look forward to so much every year. I'm gonna teach you how to get through these next two months that are filled with holidays. I don't know what your holiday, which holidays you celebrate, but for some of us, it's two holidays. For others, it's a whole bunch of holidays. Um, but what we wanna make sure is that we understand that life in moderation is sustainable. And when we try to live life uh, perfect, it's not sustainable, therefore we fail. And that's when we fail over and over and over again. And it's really, really frustrating, right? Um, well, that's not how I coach people. I coach you to sit down and we talk about, all right, what are the things that you love? And let me teach you how to incorporate them into your diet so that you don't have to do without them. You just can't have them every day. And don't forget, really important, diet. We are not on diets. We have a diet. Everything we all put into our mouth is our diet. So I hate when people say, are you gonna put me on a diet or I don't wanna go on another diet? Well, guess what, don't, because there is no such thing. Do you understand that? It really helps with mindset and helps you to get healthy between the ears when you stop thinking about your diet as, as the devil. <laughs> we all have a diet, we're not on a diet. So cross out the word have. On your piece of paper, I want you to put have a diet and then put a big X mark through the word have and then I want you to put on a diet and to put a big heart and smiley face because we are all on a diet. Some of us have an unhealthy diet and some of us have a healthier diet, right? And some of us have sometimes an unhealthy diet and sometimes a healthy diet. Does that make sense? And thank you for the thumbs up and thank you for the hearts. Robbie said we're frying a turkey for the first time. Ah, well, I've heard of those amazing fried turkeys. Um, for Thanksgiving, right? Life in moderation, that's just what we talked about. So here are some stats that are gonna blow your mind. Ready? The average weight gain between Thanksgiving and Christmas is, how, how much would you guess? Pop, pop that in below. The average weight gain between Thanksgiving and Christmas is how many pounds? So let's see if you guys get it right. While you're doing that and telling me what your guess is, um, it, you, you all probably know, but let me remind you, it takes 3,500 calories to gain a pound or 3,500 calories in a deficit to lose a pound, if you don't already know um, that stat. Uh, so let's see what people are guessing. Well, hey, Robin, I'm glad you're here. Diane Thompson is here. I love it. Joe is here. Jennifer, thank you all for being here. And Tammy Lewis, um, Robin is guessing 10 pounds. It's a very good guess because I did say 10 to 15 pounds, right? We're going to avoid the 10 to 15 pound weight gain. Um, Robbie Spillman says seven. Robbie's closer. You win. Ding, ding, ding. Robbie, I'll have to bring you something really special on Monday. Robbie is my coach for, you know how you guys, if you follow me on my Facebook stories or my Instagram stories, I'm always talking about my freedom, which is a, um, a growth track class at my church. And Robbie Spillman is my coach. And I'm so glad you're here, Robbie. Um, so average weight gain between Thanksgiving and Christmas, five to seven pounds. I know in my um, Facebook post and in my advertisement for this live, I said, let's avoid the 10 to 15 pounds. Well, here's the thing. The average is five to seven pounds, but some people do gain 10 to 15 pounds, right? Uh, so we wanna make sure that we're doing things to completely enjoy this holiday season without um, you know, our skin being so sore from <laughs> the amount of sodium we take in that we can't even touch it. So five to seven pounds, we know it takes 3,500 calories to gain a pound or lose a pound. So if the average is five to seven pounds, that's 25,000 extra calories consumed per person during the holiday season. That's crazy. <laughs> and I think, I, don't, I didn't look this up, but I think I heard once that the average Thanksgiving dinner plate is around 3,800 calories. That's another cra crazy stat that you wanna be like, what? So remember that the holidays are just that. They're days. They're not hollow weeks. They're not hollow months. <laughs> We're not hollow and all that stuff. We need to make sure that we enjoy the holidays, however many holidays you have that you celebrate, but don't turn a holiday into an entire week or an entire month or two months, which is what a lot of people do. The whole month of November and December, just they just throw their hands up and say, well, forget it. I'm just going to enjoy the holidays and I will get back on track on January. Well, why would you want to completely just throw your hands up? Let me teach you tonight. We're gonna 
I'm going to give you these five tips and you're going to write them down paper and pen. I'm being really serious. I'm not here to rah-rah and um, encourage you. I am here to give you actionable tips that you can actually put into action, which a lot of people, so many people uh, did last year when I went live about this, that they messaged me this year and said, are you going to give those tips again? Because I don't know where my notes are and I forgot them and I need to get through the holidays um, without, you know, to totally falling off the wagon. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really do need to do that live again. So here we are. So I want to make sure you write these down and take notes because you're not just going to remember what I said tomorrow morning. You're going to wake up and go, what did she say? I should do tip one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like this beam of light. Oh, yep. There it is right there. See, it's like a beam of light. Now it's gone. Now it's back. That's funny. It's like, it's cutting my face like completely down. Hold on one second. I'm going to move the light. I think that's what it is. See if that's better. All right, that might, oh, nope, but light beam is still there. Maybe it's that. Nope, it's not that either. Okay, we're not going to worry about it. Okay, so so we're not going to take the holidays and turn them into hollow weeks or hollow months. And here's how that usually happens, and I know you can probably relate, relate so let me know. Um, okay, so Thanksgiving's tomorrow. You're going to either host Thanksgiving dinner like I am, or you're going to go to someone's house, or you're going to go to a restaurant or whatever, and it's Thanksgiving, right? And you're going to have not the normal plate of food. Um, then you're going to have leftovers and you are going to consume that same type of food again the next day, maybe even the next day after that, and possibly even the next day after that. And if that food starts to get funky, you're going to be like, wow, that sweet potato casserole was so good. I should make another one or whatever. And, and then like before you know it, Christmas type of stuff is rolling around and then there's Christmas parties and then there's the the work Christmas party, and then there's Christmas Eve, and then there's Christmas Day, and then, oh my gosh, New Year's Eve, everybody goes out, and there's a lot of stuff there. And so do you see, I can see, and I understand because I live that, that's how it turns into holiday months. <laughs> and we don't want holiday months, we want holidays. So if you don't know anything about me, there might be a, some of you popping on, and you're like, I don't even know who you are, Mary. Well, let me just give you a little bit of background. Um, sometimes it might be easy to, you know, look on my Facebook page or, you know, see me tonight and be like, oh, well, she's always been healthy, so it's no big deal for her. Well, I haven't always been healthy, <laughs> um, at all. As a matter of fact, I was raised on Mrs. Paul's, Mrs. Paul's fish sticks. Anybody remember Mrs. Paul's fish sticks? Mac and cheese, that kind of stuff. My parents are amazing. Amazing. I have amazing parents. Um, but they were very busy. They both worked full time and uh, it was really just a matter of let's get something on the table to nurse the family. And so there wasn't a lot put into, uh, thought put into how can we make the dinner meal, the breakfast meal, lunch meal, whatever, as healthy as it can possibly be. I had to learn that on my own and it didn't come while I was still living at home. And then I went off to college and boy, I'll tell you, it didn't come there either. I spent the first two years in college trying to kill myself, not intentionally, but just about. Um, it was ugly. It was an ugly two years. Those first two years, I went to Marshall University in West Virginia, um, and I just fell hard. Fell hard. Um, drugs and alcohol, promiscuity. There was, uh, you know, the seventh meal. I think they call it at Taco Bell. There was always a meal. Two, three, four o'clock in the morning. There was always Lucky Charms that I ate. A bowl of Lucky Charms. I don't know why Lucky Charms. I ate a bowl of Lucky Charms after every single meal in the dining hall. Um, and I gained 30 pounds in three months. So I defied the freshman 10 or 15 or whatever they used to call it. And it was 30 for me and it happened in the first semester. And it w I went home for Christmas break and I thought my mother was going to collapse. She was like, oh, oh, oh my God, are you okay? Are you sick? My hair actually literally no joke was falling out. I had the, the biggest bald spot right here in the front of my head. It was the size of a quarter. Um, I had acne so bad because I was so unhealthy. When you're unhealthy, um, your skin is bad, your hair is bad. Like, Everything's a disaster, right? Not to mention that, you know, you gain weight and you feel yucky and it was just a big mess. Um, so I, and I more or less failed out my first two years of college. So my brother showed up, knocked on my door down in West Virginia and I was living in Maryland. I was born and raised in Maryland. Um, he came eight hours and he drugged me home and saved my life. And I, my parents made him come and get me and um, they really did save my life. So I spent the, the last two years of my college education, um, not only getting an education, but educating. Oh, I know where that light beam's coming from. Ha, I just figured it out. I'm like, where is that light coming from? That's crazy. Anyway, I spent the last two years 
just trying to dig out. So I was literally took so many credit hours trying to graduate college, trying to get my body healthy again, trying to learn what was healthy. What did that look like? What did I need to do differently to be healthy? Um, and uh, that was a journey, you know, that was a journey, but I did. I, well, I started to do it. <laughs> then I got married and I got pregnant. And so I went down that road which is nothing unhealthy about being married and pregnant, but I really wasn't trying to, you know, be in the best shape ever. I was pregnant. <laughs> and so I was not in that mindset. I was 23 and stupid or whatever. So um, anyway, so all of that happened. And then I spent the next 13 years yo-yoing. Yo, 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 yo. I mean, I, I, I would try everything. I was on the bus, off the bus, on the wagon, off the wagon, whatever you want to call it. I'd spend about three months doing really well. And then in three months I'd fall off the wagon again, um, completely unhealthy, derailed. And then I would get mad at myself, frustrated, um, had enough, enough was enough, right? And I'd get back on the wagon again and I'd start to do really well. Can you relate to what I'm saying? Thanks for the thumbs up. At least I know I'm not alone, right? So I, um, so then it was a matter of me, like everything felt like it was the solution. So every new gadget that came out, every new type of workout class, every new diet, um, was going to be the answer for me. I was certain it was going to be the answer for me. And I tried it all, you know, spin classes, boot camp, boxing. I hired a personal trainer, the thigh machine, <laughs> um, whatever, right? I tried it all because I was so desperate to just figure out, wasn't desperate to be skinny. And I wasn't desperate, like necessarily for that. I just wanted to know how can I just find a balance? How can I just live healthy every day till the day I die and not always be thinking about it and not always having to try to be perfect? How can I do this? And I would look at people like my sister-in-law who I admire so much, who's taught me so much about how to live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. And I would say, you know, Julie, okay, so, you seem to like just literally like day in and day out. I mean, you just, you're just healthy. Like she would, she just, she just was healthy. She was always feeding her family healthy food and she looked great and she had energy. And I was like, what, what are you doing? And God bless her. I love her so much. She was, she told, you know, well, you, you got to eat healthy and you got to work out. And so everyone wanted to tell me what to do. Well, I already knew what to do. I knew I needed to eat healthy and I knew I needed to work out. I needed someone to tell me how how to sustain that day in and day out forever. Um, and so I just really kept trying all these things until in July of 2008, my whole world changed. And I didn't know it at the time. I thought I was just trying another thing, right? July of 2008, someone introduced me to a system and I was like, oh my gosh, this see, I feel like this is working, this is working. And here I am nine years later, still, living my life according to this system. And now I can look back and say, it totally changed my life. And it didn't just change my life personally, it changed my life professionally as well. Praise God. Um, but you know, you don't know it at the time. You keep trying all these things and you think that's gonna be the thing, right? Well, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Um, so I know, again, if you don't know a whole lot about me, you might think, oh, well, she doesn't really understand my struggles because she's always been healthy. Well, as you can hear from my story, I haven't always been healthy. <laughs> I really struggled a lot. Now, was I 100 pounds overweight? No, but I didn't understand the formula for this whole healthy lifestyle thing forever. Um, and it was incredibly frustrating because I didn't want to strive to be perfect every day. That was freaking exhausting. Um, and I know some of you can relate to that. Hey, Julie, I'm glad you're here and hugs to you too. Um, yeah. And Bree says it's constant. It's on your brain all the time. And Julie says, how can I just be healthy and not obsess about food? That is how my, that is exactly where my brain was and what I struggled with when I was yo-yoing those exact things. How can I stop thinking about this all the time? How can it just become intrinsic to me? Brush my teeth, work out, eat my healthy breakfast, um, later on eat another healthy meal or whatever. That, how can it just be like that without me being like, oh my God, I don't feel like working out. I don't even know what workout I'm gonna do. Oh, I don't wanna eat healthy food or I forgot to pick healthy food or I didn't spend 12 hours in the kitchen on Sunday meal prepping and planning and now I have nothing and I'm gonna be unhealthy all week. And I'm here to tell you, like literally rest your shoulders and put a big smile on your face. It doesn't have to be that way. And it's not that way for me today and it hasn't been that way for nine years. 
For nine years, I have not thought that way and I have not lived that way. And it's such a relief. And thank you, Jesus. I feel, you have no idea how much I thank him every day that finally, finally, someone showed me the solution and it worked for me. And that's why I feel so strongly that my God-given purpose is to pay it forward and teach you the solution that changed my life. Because if it can change my life, it can certainly change yours as well. I ain't that special. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm special. I'm God's favorite. But, you know, I'm not any different than you. I need you to look in my eyes. I'm not any different than you. I'm just like you. I had all those struggles, right? So here's the thing. Let my story just give you hope that, oh my gosh, she struggled 13 years of on the wagon, off the wagon, all this yo-yo madness, and that's what I'm living right now. And if Mary can do it, I can do it too. You need to believe that. So there is hope, right? There is hope and struggle. And you do not have to um, live that yo-yo madness lifestyle that's cray-cray and it's too exhausting. And you don't have to put 10 to 15 pounds on over this holiday or five to seven or whatever. You don't have to wake up January the 1st and your whole body hurts so bad because you've totally overindulged for holla months. <laughs> Remember, they're holidays. They're not holla months, right? No holla months, not holla months. So you ready? You ready to get going? Because I got a turkey to brine and I got some stuff because I got people coming to my house. My sister-in-law, Julie, that I just talked about. And you need to understand something. She's still such a shining example to me. And I tell her all the time, I'm like, you know, you, you really changed my life so significantly because for the first time ever, truly, I had an example. For the first time I was looking and I was like, oh my gosh, there is someone, what an example, who has figured out this whole healthy lifestyle, sustainable forever till the day she dies type of thing. So I was never surrounded by that. I was surrounded by people that were yo-yoing like me, frustrated like me, obsessing, just like you said, really obsessing over trying to be perfect, the perfect workouts, the perfect, um, diet all the time and then I see and meet my sister-in-law and I'm like she's just this calm force who just intrinsically lives a healthy lifestyle and I was like it's possible it's possible so I looked at her and saw that what was possible and I want you to look at me and understand that it is possible too okay that's exciting that's really exciting and it makes me excited to be able to tell you guys all about it um, hey, Chandra, welcome. Okay, number one, and you're gonna be like, wow, we just really talked about this. We sure did. Paper pen, if you're just coming on, I am not here to cheer you up. I'm not here to cheer you on, and I'm not here to rah-rah you. This is, an, this is going to be um, value add to you because I'm going to give you five tips, hacks, whatever word you wanna call it, that when you hang up from me right now, you are literally gonna to, going to be able to implement these immediately, starting tonight, to be honest with you, and then roll right into tomorrow, into this holiday. So thank you for being here. You know what? I respect every single one of you that are on this live right now, whether you're listening to me live or you're listening to the replay, because you wouldn't be listening to me if you weren't serious about wanting to be healthy. And I totally respect that, I do. So we're gonna enjoy these holla days, not holla months and not holla weeks. We're going to um, put our favorite whatever on the plate. We are, isn't that exciting? We're going to have a cocktail or whatever if that's what we enjoy. We are going to not sit at these functions and stare at whatever it is we're getting ready to consume and have an overwhelming feeling of guilt. We're not, we're not, because what I'm gonna teach you tonight is going to erase all of that and you're gonna make your plate or whatever, whatever your drink and you're going to smile and you're going to enjoy it. And that actually makes the whole darn thing so much more enjoyable because you don't consume it all and then go, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. And it almost makes you for a nanosecond understand bulimic bulimics, which is awful. And I didn't mean to necessarily say it that way, but I'm just saying how many times have we thought, Oh God, if I could just get this out of my body, cause my body hurts so bad because I ate so much. Okay. Anyway, tip number one, write it down. I want you to write literally, I know you think I'm weird and I'm very OCD. If you don't know me, I want you to write number one period, just like that. And you're going to write next to it. I'm not joking. You need to have notes. Successful people take notes. And because you physically have written it down statistically, you have a higher likelihood of it sinking in and you actually doing something about it. 
So tip number one is your mindset. So if somebody is in your computer and you could put one period, your mindset, that would be helpful. I need someone will, can help me compose the list. So at the very end, no one is like, well, what was number one? What was number two? We're, we're going to help each other here. Tip number one, your mindset. So remember, we've been talking a lot about Oh my gosh, once I started to think this, or once I started to think like that, right? You have no idea. When I, as a coach, first start to work with someone, we don't even start to talk about workouts until we talk about this. We don't even start to talk about the nutrition plan or anything like that until I can get you healthy between the ears. I've got to get you healthy in between the ears right here because if you don't believe you can do this, you can, you can, and you won't because you're, you have so much self doubt and you're just like, I don't even, Mary gave me these great tips, but that worked for her, but it isn't going to work for me. Well, then you might as well just hang up right now. Just go ahead and go watch Charlie Brown Thanksgiving or whatever. It's a waste of your time. So if you believe that you actually can get through these holidays, totally enjoy them without losing your mind on food, um, then you're never ever, thank you, Brie, you're never ever going to be successful. So we've got to, we've got to, um, get healthy here between the ears. I love this quote so much by Henry Ford. And if you can write it down, it will really, really serve you well, whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. That's, that's so profound, right? It's simplistic, but it's profound. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Because our thoughts control everything. They really do control everything. And the other cool thing about our thoughts, that's my favorite thing, I love this so much and you're gonna love it too. No one, no one has control over your thoughts except you. When someone's sitting in prison, let's say they're in maximum security like holding cell, they still have control over their thoughts and their feelings and their emotions. We always have control over our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions. No one can take that away from you, no one. So if you're in an abusive relationship or you're surrounded by all these crazy unhealthy people, who cares? You can still be successful because you have control over your own thoughts, feelings, and emotions, which are going to drive your success or failure, okay? So whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, Henry Ford, love it. Um, so we gotta get healthy between the ears first. And part of changing our mindset is to actually have a visual. I want you to visualize January, like right now. D what are we, November the what are we? 22nd, 23rd, 21st, I don't know what we are, somewhere in there. <laughs> um, I want you to visualize yourself January the 1st. You, last night was New Year's Eve. You had a great time, you went out. I don't know what you do for New Year's Eve or you stayed home and banged the pots and pans like some of us um, old timers do. And, uh, and it's January the 1st and you wake up and you, you know, you like look down at yourself and you're like, I am so strong and I am so powerful. And not only is my body strong and powerful, but my mind is too. Because I just made it through two, almost two full months of holidays and I totally enjoyed them, but I didn't overindulge and I stayed on track and I moved my body and I enjoyed those holidays in moderation. And here I am. And I'm not like the average person who's gained five to seven pounds or even 10 to 15, uh, feeling so awful, not only physically, but mentally feeling like, what did I do to myself? So you got to have that visual. What's January the 1st going to look like for you? Draw yourself a picture, find a picture when you felt of yourself, when you felt like you looked so good and you felt so good and you were strong. And I want you to plaster that picture on your bathroom mirror or on the refrigerator or whatever wallpaper on your phone, <laughs> something to give you a visual of what January the 1st is going to look like for you. And I'm, I know it seems weird, but you got to have that visual. Um, and, you, and, and you're going to go into tonight when we hang up and you're going to be thinking to yourself, I can go to the holiday parties and the holiday dinners without overindulging. I can stick to my workout schedule. I can um, plan my meals, even though it's gonna be really, really busy, really busy. And I don't wanna ever hear anyone say they can't be healthy because they're too freaking busy. You make time for the things that matter. Hashtag truth over harmony. Somebody type that in there. Truth over harmony. That means I'm gonna give you truth and we're still gonna be friends. You have time for whatever you feel like is a priority in your life. 
So we all are busy. We all have a lot going on. And I have the same 24 hours in my day as you do. I am a business owner trying to build a business. I don't work eight hours a day. I work more like 12, 13, 14, 15 hours because it matters to me to build my business and help more people every single day. We're all busy. Okay, but we make time for the things that matter. So when you write down on a piece of paper, what do you do every day? Those are the things you prioritize. That's it. It's not, I'm not being rude. It's just the truth. So if you on whatever night, um, this is us comes on, I don't even know, or the voice or, or dancing with the stars now that I think is over, but whatever, if you've written that down, that every, whatever you watch that show or every, whatever you, um, do whatever it is you do, then that's a priority for you. And I'm not here to judge you or fault you. I'm just saying that's what you've chosen to do over maybe meal planning or over meal prepping or over working out. Those are your priorities. And so we need to make sure that we are taking um, account ability of where we are spending our time. Truth over harmony. Love it. Um, okay. So we can plan our meals through the holiday. If you're going to go and you're going to be eight hours in the mall shopping to do whatever, put some baggies in your purse or Know where in the mall you can get something that's decent. Don't go to um, Aunt Annie, Aunt Annie's. Is that what it is? The pretzel place. Oh God, you could be on the opposite end of the mall and you can smell it so good. Those pretzels are so good and I'm with you. They are really good. But you know what? Is there a place where you can get a wrap or a salad? Is there a place where you can get something a little bit healthier than that, right? Know ahead of time before you even get in the car, pull out of your driveway and go to the mall. What am I going to do? Because if I'm going to be gone for eight hours, I'm going to need food. So where am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? Am I bringing something with me or am I eating at healthy, uh, at a healthy place? Plan ahead, right? Plan ahead. I love it too, Jamisha, but it ain't really, really good for us. Um, so you've got to be healthy between the ears. You've got to get your mindset right. You've got to tell yourself, I can get through these holidays, this holiday season, even healthier than before it started. Why can't we wake up January the 1st and be like, damn, I made, not only did I make it through the holiday and survive it without putting on the average five to seven pounds, but I actually am closer to my goals, whatever your goals are. If your goals are to lose weight or your goal is to gain weight or goals to have lower body fat, whatever your goal is, I don't know, but you could actually be healthier come January the 1st. That's an awesome mindset. That's an awesome mindset. Um, so you've got to start with changing the way you see yourself. Don't continue to tell yourself that you're the same person you were last holiday where you blew it. You're not that person anymore. You're different because you have control over your thoughts, right? Remember that. Okay. So um, you got to make the mindset change. And remember, I think one of the biggest things I want you to write down is that you're not on a diet. You have a diet. And I think this is the most refreshing thing that I thought in July of 2008, when someone told me that I was like, oh my gosh, what a relief. I no longer have to be on a diet. Yuck. Who wants to be on a diet? Not a single soul. You have a diet. Write that down. So now here's where the action comes in. You're like, okay, well, that's all rah, rah, wonderful, Mary. But how do I do this? How do I change my mindset? How do I get healthy between the ears? Ready? Writing down pen, paper. Got it? You are are going to probably roll your eyes a little bit on this first one, but I'm telling you, it is so powerful. And I started doing this when I became a coach in June of 2012. I rolled my eyes just like you probably are. And now I'm like, holy Moses, I can't go a single solitary day without doing this. Um, because number one, I love it so much. And number two, it's totally changed. It's totally changed me. You are going to listen or read 10 minutes of some sort of personal development every day. Um, for me personally, I divide my personal development into two different categories, spiritual and skill set. So I, I start my day with my um, time with God, time in the word. So I usually do a Bible study. As I said, right now I'm doing my freedom. Uh, and so I will start my day and, and do that. Then I have audiobooks or podcasts or a, a real book you open up <laughs> or something like that. And I will, at, at an absolute minimum, spend 10 minutes filling my head with something positive, some sort of skill set that I need to learn. Maybe you are, maybe you work in a call center and you talk on the phone all the time and you help customers, which is so amazing. People, there's such a lack of good customer service anymore. Um, and you want to get better at being able to handle difficult people because there's lots of difficult people out there. So maybe you listen or read a book related to how to 
how to deal with difficult people. That will help you in your job. That will help you in every aspect of your life, but that will help you in your job. Maybe you're in sales and marketing and you want to beef up your skills with sales and marketing. Maybe you're a leader and you need to um, really work on your leadership skills or your management skills. There are books uh, and personal development on so many different topics related to, you know, skill set. So again, for me, my personal development is spiritual and then sort of the all other category, if you will. And I used to drive 45 minutes to work, 45 minutes home from work. So that's an hour and a half in a car when I still worked in corporate America. I put my audio book on and I literally filled my head with positive something, whether it was spiritual, skill set, mindset, anything, an hour and a half every day. So I'm just telling you 10 minutes. And here's the beautiful thing. I'm not asking you to find these 10 minutes. You can do what we call anchoring. And anchoring, um, anchoring habits is a really, really great way to instill habits into your life. So you can listen while you're brushing your teeth. Every morning when I'm brushing my teeth, I listen to what's called Darren Daly. Darren Hardy wrote a book called The Compound Effect, and he does an email Monday through Friday called Darren Daily. And it's just daily encouragement to get you started on your day. It's always five minutes or less. I can put the phone up, brush my teeth. I don't brush my teeth for a full five minutes, but while I'm brushing my teeth and washing my face and putting my makeup on for the day, I listen to Darren Daly. So I am anchoring one healthy habit with another habit that I do every single day. You can do the same thing. You can listen to personal development when you're driving, while you're cooking, whatever, right? Walking the dogs. So 10 minutes, this is your to-do action items. 10 minutes of personal development every single day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every single solitary day. You've got to get healthy between the ears every day, not just Monday through Friday. Um, and there's a lot of free stuff out there. As I said, podcast, YouTube channels, my live streams. Um, you can you can follow me on my Instagram stories or my Facebook stories. They're they're the same, by the way. I just copy one to the other because I have a different audience in each area. Um, I you will never hear me talking nasty about politics or the leaders of our country. I'm just not like that. Okay, so I tend to post very positive, uplifting, inspiring posts or lives or videos or things like that. So if you're looking for something like that, I'd love for you to follow me if you're not already. Um, okay, number two, ready? Who's, who's taking notes for us? Number two is planning ahead. So as we go into this holla day <laughs> season, not holla months, um, we are going to do some planning ahead. A lot of this planning ahead is just planning ahead up here. Not necessarily anything physically you have to do, but you, you can, okay? So you ready? Tip two, planning ahead. Do you happen to know the menu at the dinner or the party that you're going to? If you do, um, then you want to mentally pick what you're going to eat before you even leave your house. Does that make sense? So if you happen to know, let's say you're doing a potluck at work, and everybody's bringing something, why don't you be the one to bring the healthy dish and then just eat what you brought? <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, you can always rest assured that you're gonna eat the right thing. If you bring something healthy, then you know there's at least one healthy thing on that table, right? I always do that. I'm always the one who brings, still good, everyone enjoys it. As a matter of fact, what it really does is it shows people that healthy food can actually taste really good. And so I'll usually bring something that is really fun and really tasty, but is actually healthy, you know? So do you know what the menu is going to be? If you do, think about that menu, pick the things mentally and plan ahead what you're going to eat and then stick to that. It reminds me of a tip that I give in general, not necessarily related to the holidays, um, about eating out and trying to stay healthy when you go out to a restaurant. The biggest tip, and my husband actually uses this tip now too, is you don't, you don't open the menu. You don't open the menu. If you know where you're going to eat out, what restaurant, you look up the menu online at your house and you find what you're going to order, it's healthy and you like it. And then when you get to the restaurant, you don't open the menu because you already know, you've already saw the menu, you already know what you want. As soon as you open the menu, you're faced with what? Temptations all over the place. Mama's lasagna and, and breadsticks. And when they bring the bread to the table, no thank you, thanks anyway, I appreciate it, but I want it, but I don't need it. You know, that kind of thing, always make, we always make a joke. So plan ahead on, if you know what the menu is, pick what you're going to eat. If you don't, you have to plan for the worst. You're going to a party or you're going to a dinner and it is gonna be loaded, loaded with unhealthy things 
Oh no, what are you gonna do, right? Okay, so you are going to make sure that the rest of the meals that day are as healthy as you can possibly make them because you know wherever you're going, there really just isn't anything healthy. And for you to come into that party with a dish when you weren't asked to bring one or whatever, whatever, might you might feel uncomfortable doing that. So, and you can certainly, but if you're going to just tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to eat what's there, then just make the, the whole rest of your day leading up to that as healthy as you can possibly make that, make that day. That is what I'm doing tomorrow. I know my Thanksgiving dinner is gonna be carb loaded. <laughs> Come on, well Thanksgiving dinner isn't carb loaded. There's gonna be sweet potatoes, my absolute favorite. Those are carbs. There's gonna be dinner rolls. I don't almost never eat bread or rolls. I gotta have me some dinner rolls. Um, there's definitely gonna be a glass of wine or something like that. Those are sh sugary carbs. There will be um, stuffing, gotta have a little stuffing with the turkey, that's gonna have carbs in it. Gonna have some gravy, that's gonna, right, you could go on the list of the things that are gonna be, car it's gonna be a carb-loaded dinner. Therefore, my breakfast is not gonna have carbs in it. I'm probably gonna have a beautiful breakfast of eggs um, with some fruit, you know, things that are not necessarily heavy, starchy carbs for the, for the rest of the day. So that, again, I know I'm gonna have this carb-loaded dinner. So you gotta plan ahead. Don't skip your workout. Don't skip your workout that day. Get in your workout, sweat it out, burn some calories, create some margin, right? Everybody wants to be like, ah, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas day, I don't need to work out today. Of course you don't. Make whatever choice you want to make and maybe you plan your week that way. Maybe you like to do six workouts a week and maybe you just work out every day except that holiday. That's cool, but you planned for it, you planned ahead. I personally like to eat the day that I know I'm going to rock and roll into a meal that's not necessarily the healthiest in the world. It mentally makes me feel a little bit better about indulging. There's a difference between indulging and overindulging. Remember that, okay? So you're gonna plan ahead. Don't skip your workout. If you're going somewhere and you weren't asked to bring a dish, how about offer to bring a dish? Hey, would you, would you like me to bring a dish? I'm happy to, I make a killer whatever. I make a killer Brussels sprout dish. I make a killer salad. I make a killer whatever. You want me to bring it? And the person's like, that would be amazing. I guarantee you the host is like, thank you so much. That would be awesome. Now, guess what? You know there'll be at least one thing <laughs> on that table that is healthy. And you could, as I said earlier, you could choose to eat your dish that you brought. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, not only will that allow you to have something healthy to eat, but you can also, as I said, share beautiful, healthy dishes with other people. A lot of times people will say to me, I need this recipe. This is incredible. And you're telling me this is healthy. That's amazing. I need this recipe. So I'm usually prepared, um, with a link to that recipe or something in my, in my, um, email so I can forward it along to people electronically or whatever. You can bring printed copies, however you like to do it. Because people will inevitably ask you for the recipe. And you're gonna help the host, and I'm sure they're incredibly appreciative. So make it a rule to never indulge more than two days in a row. That's one of the things I think is one of the biggest tips. Please write that down. This is really a big one. It's really a big one. If you tell yourself, you know what? Well, first of all, I would personally say, try not to indulge more than one meal and then just be happy and you had a beautiful, awesome, whatever meal and then get back on track the next day. However, worst case scenario, don't indulge more than two days in a row. And if you do two days, just let that third day get you, get you right back on track. Because mentally, when you don't work out for two days and you don't really eat the things your body is used to, two things are gonna happen. One you are going to mentally mess yourself up. You're going out of routine big time, right? Number one. Number two, your body's gonna hurt. It's not used to food like that. It's used to eating a little bit healthier. Um, and so do your body some justice and just after two days, if you let it go for two days, which I really hope you don't, I hope it's just one meal because uh, it's a holiday, remember, then bump, get yourself right back on track on day three. Um, and I think that's it for planning ahead. So that was tip two, planning ahead. That's a lot. I hope you wrote some notes down because that's a lot of good stuff right there. Tip number three, are you ready? So who's taking notes for me? Bree, you're awesome. Tip number three, the parties and dinners. Now we talked a little bit about this, but I'm gonna give you even some more deep dive hacks. Now, hopefully you've seen so far, I'm not just telling you this is what you need to do. I'm telling you how to do it. Do you understand the difference? 
People for a very long time with me told me what to do and I appreciated that, but I already knew what to do. <laughs> I needed to know how to do it, <laughs> how to do it. How do I stay on track, blah, blah, blah. I'm giving you very specific tips and things to do, actionable items of how to stay on track. So tip number three, um, just write this down, the parties and dinner, okay? Tip number three, the parties and dinner. So as we discussed, we're gonna plan ahead. Before you leave, thank you, Bree. Before you leave, here's some stuff that you're gonna do before you leave the house, okay? So before you leave, the first thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to say yes to every single invitation. While it might be really super fun to go to every single party and dinner that you were invited to, you are literally saying yes to temptation, 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 temptation. How many temptations do you wanna smack in your face and have to deal with? Um, so I personally would limit yourself to a few of your favorites you know who are, who are the people that matter a lot to you you're the closest to which parties are the most fun I don't know however you want to make those decisions but I just wouldn't say yes to every single invitation first of all you're busy man we just talked about that we're crazy busy we have still have work we still have to get all the shopping done we still have to decorate our house and we still have to do all this other stuff so how in the world are we gonna have time to go to like 10 15 parties it's just too much you're going to number one be wicked stressed out even though it's a party and it seems like it would be fun it's a lot that goes into going to something like that right and so I personally would limit which ones you say yes to you're gonna love tip number two you're either gonna roll your eyes or you're gonna be like, oh my God, that's a really good one. That's a really good one, Mary. Most of us ladies are gonna be like, that's a good one. Then the guy's gonna be like, what? Because you guys are just different. Wear a form-fitted dress <laughs> or pants. Um, guys, for you, I love the thumbs up. Guys, for you, a nice belt that fits really well when you walk out the door because you are less likely to overindulge if you got a tight fitting dress on ladies. You know you're gonna look three months pregnant after that indulging meal, the overindulging meal. Um, or at least, I should speak for myself. I look about three months pregnant after an overindulging meal. And guys, if you got a belt on, you are not allowed to go to the bathroom and change up your belt loop. You're not. Okay, so, and you have to tell yourself that, that's the rule. And as, so before you leave the house, you gotta make sure you got on the right outfit. So it's gonna help you, it's gonna work in your favor, you're gonna love it. Number three under before you leave is don't arrive hungry. I know this seems like a total duh, but this is an action item for you. So what does that mean? Don't arrive hungry means you need to eat a meal before you go to the party, okay? And I know what you're saying in your brain. Well, but if I don't eat before I go, uh, then, I, then I'm gonna be able to eat there and then it's gonna be less calories. I promise you, trust me. Do you ever had someone, have you ever had someone say, just trust me? I know it seems backwards in your head, but you gotta trust me. I need you just to trust me. If you are not hungry when you arrive, you might pick a few things and put them on the plate and enjoy them, enjoy the way they taste, uh, enjoy the fact that you haven't had something like that in a really long time but you're not gonna be standing at the table, losing your mind, really embarrassing yourself because you're, there's not gonna be enough for anybody else because you're so hungry that you've eaten all the shrimp cocktail. <laughs> you've been there, haven't you? I know. I've eaten all the shrimp cocktail before. Um, don't be that person, right? So if you have a high quality meal replacement shake or you just wanna just make a meal, even if you just make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on whole wheat, like just make something so you're not walking in starving, starving, bad idea. Tip number four under before you leave, it's all still under tip number three, by the way, <laughs> the parties and the dinner. You are going to chug like, like your whole life depended on it, 12 ounces of water. And you can do it in the car. Do it on the drive over to wherever you're going. Fill your belly with water. Chug, 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 chug. Now my water bottle's 40 ounces. That's a big boy right there. Um, I take it everywhere I go, even the car, because the way it's laid out, it doesn't drip. It, it, it's all sealed up, so it's cool, cool and good to go. I literally just open the straw and I almost don't stop drinking like the entire whatever, going to wherever we're going. You, you've, you've gotta fill your body with water because it's going to fool your body into thinking you're full. Sorry, that was good. 
And then again, you're not gonna stand there at the table like a ravenous, crazy person. You're going to be full. Okay, now at the event, at the actual event, what are you gonna do? This is the biggest tip I can give you and it's really hard to do because I will find myself gravitating in that direction and I'm like, no, 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 no. Do not, please write this down because you'll forget it. Do not hang out at the food table and talk to people. Don't hang out in the kitchen. Don't hang out at the food table. Don't hang out where there's food. Get you a nice little plate and go in a nice, awesome corner. Go outside by the pool. Go into the living room area. Go away from the food table and have a really awesome conversation with somebody at the party. Get your mind off the food. Just like we were talking about earlier. I forget who said it. Maybe it was Julie. Um, you, it's all you can think about. It's like you obsess about it. Well, it won't be all you think about and you won't be obsessing about it if you can't see it constantly. So if you're standing there at the food table and you're talking to this person and you just keep looking at the amazing food on the table or you're talking to the person this way and the food table's like behind them and all you can think about is the food that's right behind them. Go away from it. Stop staring at the temptation and it's so cruel. It's like that's cruel. It's like just mean. You're mean to yourself. Step away from the food table, table, people. So get away, far away. Get away from the kitchen. Get away from the food table. Get a plate and go have a great conversation with a friend. Um, again, fill the plate with little small portions of everything. If you want to try everything, that's what I like to do. I'm like little, little dabble of that, little dab of that, little dab of that. And then if there's something that you were like, hmm, that thing right there was really good. Like I would really like to have more of that. Fine. Go have a little bit more of that because you only had a little bit of everything else. So it's okay to get a little bit more of something else. Totally cool. Right? Totally cool. Um, go easy on the cocktails. We don't need 12 Spicy drinks. I used to call them spicy when my son was little. That way he didn't want to sip. <laughs> They're like, no, these are spicy drinks. You don't want any of these. So go easy on the spicy drinks. Go easy on the cocktails. Have one, maybe two, maybe two, but I would say two tops. Sip them. Like my husband says, it's like you have a nipple on that drink. Well, that's cool for me. I enjoyed it all night long and I only drank maybe one glass of wine and you can make fun of me, but I don't really care. Why do I care? Why do I care what people think of me? I don't care. Um, they're the ones who are going to be knocking down my door in January saying, I need your help, Mary. Oh my God, I need your help. So go easy on the cocktails. They're loaded with empty calories. Um, doesn't mean you can't have any, but plan ahead. Just like I told you, tomorrow night, I know I'm going to have a glass of red wine. That is what in my meal plan, what I call a yellow, which is a carb and it counts as a yellow. And so I'm saving that yellow. I'm saving that carb for dinner because I want to have that glass of wine with my dinner. So you just have to plan ahead for stuff like that. Um, the other thing about cocktails is they fool you into thinking you're still hungry. So if you consume too many cocktails or sodas for Pete's sakes, please don't drink any sodas. Um, all they do is work against you because it fools your body into thinking that you're still hungry when you're probably not. You're just thirsty because you've been drinking all these cocktails. You need some good, pure water. Um, and that's the other thing. If you're going to have a cocktail, fine, but have a big glass of water also sitting there somewhere. Ask the hostess if she doesn't have, he or she doesn't have water out. Hey, can I get a glass of water? Do you have any water that, that I could have? That way you're drinking your cocktail, but you're also having some big chugs of water in between because you want to make sure you keep yourself hydrated. Um, and like I said, sip them slow. You can still enjoy them, right? Just sip it slow. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be chugging stuff back. Um, stick to red wine or clear liquors. They're a little bit better than the other stuff. Um, you'd probably want to steer clear of like all of the sugary martinis that are out there. Or if you decide you'd like to have one, just have one for Pete's sakes. You don't need five of the sugary martinis. Just enjoy one and enjoy it. And, and be, don't be mad at yourself for enjoying it. As I said, drink water while you're there. Um, here's the other thing that I like to do. I like to ask the host if I can help clean up or if I can help with anything. Because if I'm busy, if I'm staying busy, number one, I'm staying busy so I'm not thinking about all the food. Number two, I get an opportunity to visit with the host or whoever else is like helping out. And so it's fun, it's fun. And you're being a help and you're keeping your mind busy and off of like all of the food that's sitting over there on that crazy table. Um, and like, and I think the most important tip under this whole tip number three is focus on the company. Focus more on the amazing friends or family that are in the room and how wonderful it is to be surrounded by these people. Maybe you haven't seen in a really long time. Just, just really engage in awesome conversation. Go meet new people that you've never met before. I love meeting interesting people. I just love it. 
Um, and so you're a lot less focused on the food table, the dreaded food table. All right, tip number four. I feel like I don't want to go over. I really want to hold told to just an hour. This is going to be hard. Tip number four is the leftovers. This is a great, great tip. If you're the host, like tomorrow, I'm the host. Thanksgiving is here at my house. You are going to make sure you have plenty of Ziploc bags or plenty of those um, plastic containers that are like the throwaway kind. You get that stuff out of your house, people. Get it out. Everybody has to leave with a leftover. It's a rule. Thank you, Brie. It's a rule when they when you're the host. Some you ha they have they can pick anything they want, but they gotta leave with at least one thing. I always tell people that at least one, if not multiple. Get it out. Now you might want to save the turkey because that's probably the turkey is probably the healthiest thing of Thanksgiving, and it's my least favorite thing. I'd rather fill my plate with all the side dishes, and I'm sure I hopefully you guys are like you can relate because like who doesn't love the cranberry sauce? Okay, anyway. Um, so everybody leaves with leftovers. If you're the host, everybody leaves with leftovers. That's my rule. If you can't get rid of it, cause they are hardcore saying, cause maybe they're, cause the next tip you're going to laugh, maybe they are trying really hard to do well. Um, so if they don't leave with leftovers and you find your refrigerator is filled with all that stuff and you really don't want to eat it for days on end, take it to a shelter. Take it somewhere. Go give it to someone. Take it to coworkers. Take it to work the next day. Take it to work on Monday. And just get it out of your house, right, as fast as you can. Put it all in um, plastic baggies and, and put them in your car. And drive around where you know that there are a lot of homeless people who maybe stand on the corner or they sit on certain benches or whatever. And take them. Food. They will be very appreciative of that. And it's good, beautiful, amazing um, delicious food that you had for your holiday meal and wish them, of course, a, a, an amazingly blessed holiday. Get it out. Get it out. Trust me when I tell you. Um, if you're the guest, <laughs> so here's where the whole thing goes upside down. If you're the guest, you're only going to accept leftovers that are the healthier leftovers, right? <laughs> so take some turkey, take whatever was healthy that was at that meal. Be like, you know what? Yes, I'm happy to take you, take some leftovers. I'd love to take that leftover salad. I'd love to take some of that turkey if you're okay with that or whatever. Take the healthier stuff um, and polite, or just politely decline to take anything if there was nothing healthy. <laughs> So I went against what I said up above. So if you're the host, then you might have people say that to you. And that's okay. You want to be respectful of that. Okay, so just take your food to the homeless or to the shelters or something. Okay, this is where this whole category of tip number four with the leftovers, this is where the holiday turns into the holiday week, turns into the holiday month. Because it's all of these leftovers that are sitting in your refrigerator that you either A, love and want to eat, B, feel ridiculously guilty to throw food away, don't we all? But you're just gonna to continue to eat cranberry sauce for 12 days is not going to help you. You're going to be statistically in that category of gaining the five to seven pounds and you really don't wanna be that person. Now, take the, the healthier leftovers, which uh, most of us are gonna have healthy tur I mean, uh, leftover turkey, right? You can make turkey sandwiches, you can make turkey chili, you can make turkey omelets, you can make turkey whatever, whatever. You can make turkey, so many turkey leftovers. If you need healthy turkey leftover recipes, message me, email me. I'll put my email in here and I'll send you a whole bunch of them. I have a whole bunch of them. Um, we just don't need the sugary side dishes for five days. Does that make sense? Is everybody still with me? Thumbs up, hearts, something. Because I need your energy because I've been talking for a long time. Okay, tip number five, bar none, hands down, the most important tip that I'm giving you tonight. So I hope you're still staying. And I will be trying to be as quick as I can with this because I really want to respect your time. And I have a turkey to brine. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Robin, for the thumbs up. Please give me some feedback so I know you're here and you're with me and you're relating and these are helpful. Is this helping you? Are you writing it down? Are you promising, pinky promise, that you're going to put these in action? Because again, I've not only told you what to do, I'm telling you how to do it. I hope you appreciate that. Because that's what I needed and nobody told me the how. They told me the, the what. So I hope you appreciate the how. Tip number five. The most important tip. Literally, hands down. And Brie, you've been so amazing typing these out for me. Tip number five is community slash support slash accountability. So community, support, 
accountability, whatever word you want to use. Thank you, Angela, for saying it's helpful. I appreciate that. So tip number five. And so we'll recap all five of the tips. And Bree, you're so amazing. You've been typing them out. I want to make sure everybody has these notes because it's really, really important. Thank you, Robin, for writing them down. And thank you for saying I'm amazing. You're amazing. Because you're going to do all these. And I can't wait to talk to you on January the 1st. And I can't wait. Robin is in my awesome accountability group. And Robin is going to be like, oh my gosh this totally rocked my world. This changed my holidays. And here I am January the 1st, and I'm actually healthier than I was before Thanksgiving. Um, Robin, um, another Robin, Robin, um, I can't think of her last name for some reason. It just went right over my head. Another wonderful uh, friend of mine, Robin, (laughs) not that Robin, different Robin. She is, she met me last year when I went live with all this, and she's been with me an entire year. Um, and she stayed on the wagon and it's so it's proof positive that all of this stuff really works. Thank you, Dave, for saying that you're, um, that it's helpful. Okay. So tip number five is community slash support slash accountability. That's tip number five. Here is the deal. Environment is so incredibly important. If you take a seed and you lay it on asphalt on your driveway, and then you take another seed and you plant it in soil the seed planted in soil is gonna grow. The seed that's sitting on top of the asphalt is gonna do anything. Why? Because the seed that's in the soil is in the right environment to harvest, to flourish, to be successful. The seed that's on the asphalt is not doing anything because it's not successful on asphalt. It needs soil to be successful and to grow. Your environment plays such a key role in everything. Let me explain something to you, and I am so incredibly serious about this. This is like, this, when I think back to July of 2008, I think what made the biggest difference? Yes, I was introduced to really great workouts. Yes, I was introduced to a really solid meal plan that really helped me with the nutrition piece. But this third piece, this accountability piece, this is the piece that was the difference maker. This is the piece that has kept me on the wagon for nine years because we all know we need to eat healthy, And we can find healthy recipes all all day long for free on Google. We all know we need to work out and we can find free workouts all day long on YouTube. So why isn't the whole world healthy? Because they can get workouts and healthy food recipes for free. Why wouldn't everybody be healthy? Because they are lacking the accountability. Your spouse and your friends and your significant others and your family are not your accountability partners. They love us so much that they do not want to hurt our feelings. Robin Saxton. Thank you, Robin Pike. I knew I would come up with her last name, but you came up with it for me. They do not want to hurt our feelings. Therefore, they are not going to be the ones to say, hold on, hold on a minute. You said these were your goals and you're, you're going off the course and you're tapping them on the shoulder saying, hey, I see you're off course. Hey, I I, I noticed we haven't seen you in a while. You haven't checked in. You haven't showed us you're working out. You haven't talked about eating healthy. Are you okay? What's going on? What's happening? Let us help you. Let us rally around you. Your family's not gonna do that because they they, they don't wanna hurt your feelings or they don't wanna get in a fight with you, right? Because that per, they, they just love us too much. It's the same thing with my husband. I don't hold him accountable. Why? Because I don't want to be a nagging wife constantly or staring at his plate every time he orders something and him feeling like I'm constantly judging him. I'm not. So I make, I am no accountability partner for my husband. I'm not. He wants me to be, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just not going to do that. I've got to have a different kind of relationship with him and it doesn't work. When you work with me, I love you enough and I don't have that kind of a spousal relationship or anything with you that I am going to tap you on the shoulder and I am going to message you and I am going to say, I haven't seen you for a few days. Are you okay? In the most loving way, you have to have somebody that notices and cares when you don't show up. You do. And that is exactly what I had in July of 2008. I had great workouts, had an amazing nutrition plan, and I had somebody who was noticing and caring if I didn't show up. So during this holiday season, you have to surround yourself with people that are going to notice and care if you don't show up. You've got to surround yourself with people who are like-minded, positive, healthy people on the journey with you. 
We become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. That is a hard core statistic. Who are your five? Who are your five? Who sits next to you at work? Who sits in the cube next to you? Who sits in the office next to you? Who do you go to lunch with every day at work? Who is in your house physically? Who are your neighbors? Who do you hang around with on the weekends? Who are your core five? Some of those people we can't necessarily remove. Maybe that's a negative spouse, right? That is not supportive of us. That's okay. Make the other four people in your five the healthiest, most positive people you can possibly surround yourself with. You are going to be more likely to be successful if you do that. And I would love nothing more than to be one of your five. Um, Robin Pike, who's in here, she recently joined into my amazing accountability group. I hope that you give a testimonial in here, Robin, to say what, what change has it made in your life? I mean, we, we actually check in on an app right on our phone. It's not complicated. It doesn't take hours. It takes two seconds. I did my workout and I'm eating healthy today. Whatever, right? Or I'm not. I'm falling down. I need help. Um, oh my gosh, I haven't done my workout yet today. Somebody pick me up off the ground because I'm getting ready to walk into this holiday party and there is so much unhealthy food here. How am I ever going to get through this? Or I'm at work and their vendors are bringing in all the chocolates every single day. That used to be me where I worked every day. We would have vendors sending us holiday gifts and I was like, oh dear God of mercy, how am I going to get away from all this stuff? But you just have to have a really solid support system and you got to have people around you saying, turn away turn away. Today, I did not want to do my workout. I had a lot of cleaning to do, a lot of cooking to do, and a lot of meal, pro all kind of stuff I had to prepare for tomorrow. But I was sitting here working and I could hear my phone ping, ping, ping. And I would look down and it was all of my amazing, wonderful fit family checking in saying, I did my workout. Whew, got it done. On to enjoy the holiday. Boom, ate healthy today. The whole nine yards, Robin being one of them. Everyone was, so, so, oh my gosh, I looked down and I'm like, um, yeah, if they can do it, I can do it. So I got my ass up and I went and got my workout done and it was way later than it normally is, but they got me up. The funny thing is, is they think I coach them. Guess what, Robin and whoever else is on this call that I actually coach, you coach me every single day because I need you just as much as you need me. And that is the beauty of this community and accountability group that I run is that we, it's called faithfully fit for a reason. We help each other to stay faithfully fit. Um, and without them, it just would be so different. It would be so, so hard. So who are your five? Again, who do you sit by at work? Who do you hang around with on the weekends? Do you have a fit family? Do you, um, have people that are willing to be honest with you, not rude, not disrespectful, but honest enough to tap you on the shoulder and say, Mary, gosh, you told me you wanted this, this, and this. You told me these were your goals and I'm not, I'm seeing you slip. So here's the thing. When you work with me, you might slip on the wagon, but I will do everything humanly possible to keep you from falling off the wagon. You have to have that, not just during the holidays. You have to have that every day, all day, all year long. But I'm just telling you, especially as you head into the holiday, why not start now? Why not get in to an environment where somebody is noticing and caring when you're not showing up? It is not the time to say, I'm going to wait until January. It is even more so the time to say, I got to do it right now because I could actually take myself from here and go 12 steps backwards before this whole January, New Year's Eve, resol New Year's resolution stuff rolls around. How would you like to actually be able to wake up on January, January the 1st and say you're in a better place? You're actually healthier on January the 1st than you were on Thanksgiving and you enjoyed your holidays. You were able to have your cranberry sauce. You were able to have your glass of wine. You were able to have a really awesome meal, guilt-free, but in moderation, right? So I've given you these tips. These are solid tips. And again, I did this whole presentation last year and I actually had people message me and say, are you gonna do it again? Because it got me through the holidays successfully and I wanna make sure that I'm setting myself up for success. So I really, really hope you've written all of this stuff down. Um, Angela says, thank you for all the tips, love them, I need to get to bed. You got it, girlfriend. 
you get your workout in. Um, so here's the thing. I'm opening up an invitation to you. This is a personal invitation. If you do not have a fit family, if you do not have an accountability group, I would love to be that person for you. I would love to invite you into my group, Faithfully Fit, and let us all surround you. Let us all notice and care when you don't show up. Let us all be there to tap you on the shoulder and say, are you okay? What's going on? How can we help you? And all you have to do um, to, to talk to me about this, to get started with this, is email me. So I've given you my email address here right in the live, or comment below. I'm in Mary. Tell me, what do I need to do? How do we start chatting about you being my accountability partner, Mary? How can I get into your group so I can go through the holiday season, enjoy it, and actually maybe even be better come January the 1st than I am today? Because you can be, because I did. Last year, I actually lost weight. Come January the 1st, I, I lost weight and was closer to my goals on January the 1st than I was the day before Thanksgiving. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm not any different than you, right? So let me know. Again, email me, comment below so we can start a conversation. I got to get to know a little bit more about you and so I can determine um, how I can help you and what I would recommend. Uh, Robin says, you're definitely in my five. Watching your videos and seeing your energy is what drew me to you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to be a part of this great fitness group and have you as my coach. I love your energy. Thank you. I, I, I know I have an abundance of energy. Um, some people are like, is that real? And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is. So I hope that the, the people that don't think it's uh, weird or silly, they actually get me and they actually want to be around that energy. And then there's, of course, people that are like, oh, she's weird. And I'm like, bye-bye. <laughs> Please. As a matter of fact, if you don't leave or dislike me or unfollow me, I would beg you to because I... I don't know how to be anybody else but me. Diane Thompson says, uh, I love your energy, your inspiration. Enjoy the holidays, Mary. I'll be thinking of you. Same to you, Diane. Um, it's great to, great to have you on here. It's awesome. It's awesome to have you on here. Well, I'm going to let you go. I've got turkey to brine and lots of stuff. If you have questions, um, pop them below. Tag me so that I see your question. And um, I want to hear from you below here if you are going to be with me let me be one of your five let's lock arms that how do I lock my own arm I don't know how to lock my own arm um that's what I that's what I actually told thanks Brie that's what I actually told my whole fit family I said we've got to lock arms and we've got to get through the holiday season because it's a holiday it's not a holiday week it's not a holiday month we could take you know two holidays and turn them into two months of pandemonium and we don't want that so to recap tip number one is we've got to get healthy between the ears first we have to make sure that we have a positive healthy mindset going into the holiday and forever to be perfectly honest with you tip number two is planning ahead it doesn't take but a minute to sit down and think about where am i going and what's the menu going to be like and how can i ensure that i have something that's healthy um, as a healthy option when I get there. Tip number three is the parties and dinner. What do, what do you do before you leave? You make sure you don't arrive at the party hungry. Make sure you eat something. Chug your 12 ounces of water on the drive over there. Once you get to the event, do not hang out at the food table. Biggest tip I can give you. Get a nice plate, go find a really awesome person to talk to or meet somebody new and go sit somewhere far away from the uh, food table at the party. Tip number four, the leftovers. Don't take the unhealthy leftovers if you're going to someone's party, but um, opt to take some healthy leftovers if there are any. And if you're the host, get those leftovers out of your house. Just make sure you tell everybody, please take stuff with you. Make sure you have baggies or containers that they can take them with them. And tip number five is community support and accountability. You have to surround yourself with people that notice and care if you don't show up, that help you get through these holidays without completely overindulging. You've got to be surrounded by people that are like, hey, 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 what are we doing here? This is crazy. We don't need 12 plates at this party. We need one plate, enjoy ourselves, a cocktail or two, and then let's just be satisfied and move on. Let's enjoy the company and not be so focused on obsessing about all the food and all the things that are tempting us and standing in front of us. Um, thank you, Brie, for being our note taker. I appreciate you. Um, and I'd love that you'd want to be in my fit family. Brie, just email me. I gave you my email in the live here. Just email me and then we'll start a chat and I'll get to know more about you and then we'll get you um, into the fit family and anyone else who'd like to join us as well. Have an amazingly blessed Thanksgiving. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year, whatever you celebrate. I, um, I pray that you are surrounded by people that you love and you care about and that are fun. And I really pray that you're surrounded by people who um, help you to stay on the wagon, who help you to stay 
on course. So tomorrow's Thanksgiving, fill a plate um, in moderation with things that you love. Mine will be cranberry sauce and for sure the sweet potato casserole and for sure some stuffing and for sure that dinner roll and for sure a little bit of turkey. Um, I prefer the ham, whatever. Um, and my glass of red wine. So I hope this was helpful. I really hope you physically wrote everything down because as I said, statistically, you're more likely to be successful if you physically wrote it down. That's just statistics. It's not Mary making it up. If you have questions um, after this, again, pop your question, tag me so I see it, and then I'll make sure I get it answered for you. Happy holidays to all of you.